Welcome to Mr. B's Chocolate Chip Cookies. You'll need to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. For this recipe, you'll need two jelly roll pans and two sheets of parchment paper. If you prefer, you can use one jelly roll pan and one sheet of parchment paper, but you'll have to wait between the two batches for everything to cool. You'll also need a spatula. You'll need a stand mixer or a hand mixer and a mixing bowl, or you'll need a very strong arm and a wooden spoon. If you're using a stand mixer, you need the mixing bowl and the paddle attachment. For this recipe, you're going to need one stick of butter, that's half a cup of butter, and it should be softened a little bit. You'll also need half a cup of sugar and half a cup of brown sugar, which you've into the measuring cup. Pack it with the back of a spoon, and then if you turn it upside down, it should come out looking like a hockey puck. You'll also need other ingredients for this recipe. You'll need one teaspoon of vanilla, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of water, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure you're using baking soda this time because the brown sugar acts as an acid. You'll need one and a half cups of flour and you'll need one full cup of chocolate chips. Optionally, you can add half a cup of walnuts or other chopped nuts. And then you'll also need one egg. We're going to start by creaming the butter and sugar together. This is a very important process. And so we're going to put the sugar in the mixing bowl and then we're going to add the butter. Now if you short this step, your cookies won't be as nice. Some people just mix the butter and sugar together. They don't actually cream it. So we start on the lowest speed possible until everything gets moving so that we don't have everything flying around. Once it starts moving, I turn it up to the second speed. And once that looks good, I'm going to turn it up to the fourth speed, which is the number four speed on the stand mixer. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop this to show you where some people stop. And if you notice, it looks kind of like coarse, wet sand. And that's not what we want. That is not creamed together. If you continue going, you'll notice it starts to look more like dough, like a light brown dough. That's when you know it has creamed together. And that usually takes about a minute on the stand mixer, about two minutes on an electric hand mixer, and about three to four minutes by hand. Go ahead and add in the egg and start again real slow because you don't want everything to splash. And this time I'm only going to turn it up to level two because we're going to add in the flour after this really soon. And it's pretty easy to mix this together. So notice once it's all mixed together, I'm going to turn it off and then I'll be adding in the flour. Making sure the mixer is completely off, I'm going to add in the baking soda and water, stir that up with a spoon, and pour that in right away. That helps keep the clumps down. Then I'll go ahead and add in the salt, and I'll add in the vanilla, and I'll mix that together really quickly and then I'll finally add in the flour that I promised I would add. So that's just a real quick mix. And I'm going to add in the flour. And if you notice really carefully, you'll notice me rolling the bowl of flour just a little bit, turning it, so that way that gets all the flour out. And that's a nice little trick to help keep it from spilling everywhere. Now here we have to be really critical that we're not going to turn it up too fast. We don't want it flying everywhere because not only would it make a horrible mess in the kitchen, but it would also throw off our proportions and the power we have. 
Once it's starting to mix in, I can turn it up. And once it comes together and looks like it's all mixed together, I go ahead and stop it. At this point, we take it off of the mixer, and then I scrape off the dough as best as I can. It's pretty sticky, and my camera is actually in the way, so it's really hard for me to get it all the way off. That's why I'm having such a difficult time. But get as much off as you can, within reason. And then take your chocolate chips, and now would be also the time for the nuts, and put them all in at once and mix it until it's just combined. The reason that we do this not in the mixer is because we don't want to crush the chocolate chips. If we were put it in the mixer, we'd end up with chocolate dust cookies instead of chocolate chip cookies. So I go ahead and mix that really well, and once they're just mixed in, I go ahead and divide up the cookie dough into four pieces. I'm going to use my spoon to divide up the cookie dough first in half, and then I'm going to divide each half in half again. So here I go, I'm dividing it in half, then I divide each half in half. That gives me four pieces of cookie dough. Now I'm going to take one of those four pieces of cookie dough and take one third of one of those pieces and drop it onto the paper. Notice I'm using the second spoon to drop it and I'm not touching the cookie dough onto the paper. I'm letting it drop onto there. Repeat that until you have three cookies and you've used then a quarter of your dough. Repeat again with another quarter of your dough, and you'll end up with six cookies. Put that pan aside, and then repeat the same process, and get another pan of six cookies. If you were doing this all with one pan, don't forget you have to let the pan cool completely between batches. Go ahead and put it in the oven for 16 minutes. Make sure your oven was preheated to 350 degrees and then let it sit for five minutes, then put it on the cooling rack for five more minutes, and enjoy your cookies. Thanks for watching.